Hey guys, thanks for joining. So after we set up the firewall on AWS, now we're gonna start uh, working on the power of the firewall. I'm gonna start by setting up a global protect VPN. So this is the VPN client for Palo Alto. Just so that we could access it as a user and so on and so on. I'm gonna first set it up with local access. Then uh, we'll set it up with Active Directory. And um, yeah, we'll go from there, okay? So first, to set it up locally, what we need to do is um, we need to create a user and a user group, okay? So you don't have to create a user group, but it's better like whenever you wanna if you create one user, then every time you add a user, you have to add it to the global protect. Adding it to the user, adding those users to the user group is uh, much easier. Okay. So we've added the user. You just have to give him a username and a password. Here, this is the user group. We're gonna make it uh, name it local. Same everything with local. This, this is uh, and here you add the user. Okay, guys. So after creating the user group, we have to add an authentication profile just to specify how we're gonna authenticate for the global protect. So we specify local database. And allow this to specify that you want to use the local user group. Okay. You can specify all but why you want to do that. Alright, so now, now we have to do a certificate for encryption and decryption. So you could actually import your own certificate. Uh, Maybe we'll do that in another video, but now we're gonna just generate one, okay? So we have to give it a common name. We're gonna use the public ID of the, of the firewall. You could fill more attributes here for the certificate authority and so on so on, but I'm not going to do that. And also here you need to specify like we didn't want the maximum version that... Uh, So under network here we need, I, wanna, I like to do the global protect under a tunnel. Uh, I think it's more uh, useful and easier to troubleshoot in case there's issues. And let's you know what let's uh, go to the management so it's like able to manage it from the since this is local and for the admins, so we don't have to keep our management IP and our management uh, submit. And uh, what else? Yeah, sure. Right, let's commit the change for now and see if uh, we get any error, we shouldn't, and then we'll configure our uh, portal and gateway. Alright, we're good to go, then we go to... Uh, uh, no, onto the network. Alright, so let's go, let's start by creating our uh, portal. So the portal is the, the place that you get all your um, agent information and configuration and it's, uh, 
from your after authentication to your from your portal you go then authenticate with your gateway but you'll authenticate with the proper gateway example you could set uh, users that are located in the us to use a particular gateway and and actually it's based you could also rely on the delay between them but if you have two gateways set as high and then our auto will pick the closest one to them and actually this is not a portal for And usually here you'll be able to set an interface as IP, but uh, in this case we cannot. And we won't gonna get the logs from both. It's accessible at the same handshake and everyone's accessible one. And you could forward this, uh, we'll go over how logging forwarding to configure that. Okay, here we're gonna set like a portal agent. So client, um, if you want client certificate and um, if you want to save the user's credentials, I want to do that, yes. Here, you want to make like a couple of restrictions or specify what you want to check, like the user group, like what user group can uh, use the portal, and so on and so on. Just be careful, but usually, users can directly authenticate to the gateway. That there's uh, like, uh, it's a security threat to configure to make restrictions on the portal and not the gateway, okay? So you have to put them on both. Here you're specifying what are the internal gateways which we don't have, for us it's an external gateway. And here you could specify the URL or the IP, and the IP for us is this. And you could specify here the source region, okay, so... Maybe we have Canada, and so on and so on, based on the country. Okay, but for us it's for everywhere. And here you specify the priority of the gateway. For us, since we have only one, it's highest. And here you could make like a restriction on the app. For us, just since this is a lab, I'm gonna make it manual on demand. I don't wanna keep it always on. And like you could go into each one of those and do the research whether they do exactly. Pablo Alto has very good documentation. For now, let's keep it as default. And we're not doing client with VPN. And for some reason, we didn't take the certificate. Alright, so now, now let's go to the gateway. I didn't put the authentication profile on the gateway, I have to redo that. That's only the portal, I mean. Here you can specify if you want to allow certificates or what or for. So some people would like to do machine and the user certificate, so we're not gonna do something that complicated. So as I said, I like always doing it tunnel mode to make it tunnel 100, enable IP set for sure. Client settings, let's do that. Okay, you could make restrictions and so on and so on. Uh, let's do Okay, iOS is source users and so on. The IP pool, so we didn't do that. So this is like that one like one six eight dot uh, one hundred dot I think I have to make an address an object, an address object. Did it take it? Look at good. But it's always better to work with objects, just since uh, so you want to make some restriction for this ID, you have it under the object ID, you don't have to come check it from here. Yes, I want to do split tunneling, so I don't want to use this uh, of the internet, so just include those addresses. I don't want to edit those right now, so it's okay. All 
good, so let's see what's happening. So the only disadvantage of using a local cert is actually you need to get the certificate from the device, download it on your machine and trust it, okay? There's, in some cases you could just trust it directly, but a lot of time... Um... Okay, so we need to do that, just uh, the inside zone enable. Uh, always read the warning, by the way. Uh, and here I didn't do that, as I said before, let me fix that now. So under the portal I didn't specify the um, client authentication. And as I said, I'm going to keep everything as default for now. And under the zones inside, I want to enable user identification. And let's try it. Let's enable also device identification at the same time. So the conversion is correct, now we need to test it. So the first thing, as I said, um, I've tried it multiple times on my machine, it's not going to authenticate with the firewall if the cert is not trusted. So what I need to do is just download that and... Uh, and I don't want to find it here. Alright, so I was able to connect. Uh, all I had to do is just copy the cert to my uh, to my folder and also just run sudo update ca cert. Since I'm using Ubuntu, Windows or Mac are much easier. You just have to copy the authority to the and trust it. Okay. And I really, really recommend actually using your own uh, like a, an official certificate from like you could get that from GoDaddy, wherever your domain is registered. And on the monitor, we could actually go on the global protect. All right, and you could see here, this is the authentication. And you see here, this one has failed. I've done it purposely, and <coughs> it says failed. And you could see here, those are those are successful ones. And actually, all those are the same because you have the portal authentication and portal get config. This is on. It tells you the event. So this is like the configuration stage. And then you have the gateway registration. And then the gateway config, setting up IPsec, and then connect, and so on and so on. Alright guys, I think I'm going to stop the video here. And the next one we'll do like, we'll convert from local authentication and we'll, or actually we could keep the local and add the authentication with our Active Directory. Okay, so thanks for joining guys. Please like and subscribe. And if you have any questions or anything, leave it in the comment section or reach out to us through our contact us page. Okay, thank you.